Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 44 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilais, coming to you today from... <coughs> excuse me, coming to you today from YouTube. It's going to be a, a single fragrance episode today. We're going to be smelling the latest thing from this brand. As you're tuning in, if you want to leave some comments or ask some questions, I would be very, very interested in hearing about your experiences of this brand, uh, Tower Perfumes. I'm sure there must be lots of uh, fans out there. If you are fans, I'd love to know what your favorite Tower Perfumes are. We're gonna be smelling um, the brand new one. Uh, don't forget that even if you're after, even if you're watching after the live broadcast has finished, I always welcome questions, comments, thumbs up, uh, channel subscriptions, all of that kind of thing is very, very good. And if you're watching, uh, on Facebook because I try to link to all the videos from Facebook as well. Please free, feel free to leave a comment on um, Facebook too. So before we get to it, uh, and I always need to just make sure that everything is all right on the tablet because that's my main way of seeing all the um, comments. So Mystery Forms Beta says, hello again. Why hello, fancy meeting you here. Hello from Doha, says Rizwan. You already got it, says Ashfaq. Well, I tried, I tried to, um, well, I tried to and I succeeded in getting a little sample for myself. I don't have a full bottle, uh, so I can't show you what the full bottle looks like, but you can check it out online. Fahmi says, hello again. So my absolute favorite is L'Air du Désert Marocain. Um, yeah, that is, that is, I think, the brand's best seller and certainly Tower's best known scent. Would it be terribly sacrilegious to say that it's not my favorite? I, mean, I do like it very, very much, and I think it is a beautiful scent. I mean, it kind of goes without saying that it's a beautiful scent, but it's not my favorite Tower. My favorite Tower is the one that's got the number three on it that is lurking over there to my right, and that's Lone Star Memories. Maybe because I actually find it more original. Lair is 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 a gorgeous amber, a gorgeous modern amber, um, but it's one of a few, I think. Uh, I, I know I'm in a minority saying this, and and you know you you can you can you can you can hate me, and for all I know I may be wrong, but I, I really really love Lone Star Memories. I live in Switzerland, says Stefan, and got this a week ago. So what do you think of it? You have to tell us. Uh, oh, fi, Mystery Forms, a rose de Kandahar for me so far. That's a beautiful rose, actually. And Andy knows what he's doing with roses. He, he seems to have a particular skill in bringing out the, the, the many different facets of rose. We haven't got the time today to go to... Oreza says, never tried Tower. You should. You've got such a treat in store. Um, check out my reviews on my blog, because I think... I think I have reviewed just about every perfume he's ever released. There are a few maybe recent-ish ones when he when he did his Flash series for his Towerville sub-brand. I think I missed some of those, but certainly from his main brand, I think I've covered everything. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know much about him, he is a very, very, very interesting uh, figure to find out about. We, we haven't got the, the, the time now to get into the story of, of Andy Tower and how he got into perfumery. But 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 essentially he's he's self-taught, um, and if you can find maybe an interview with him, there the, there is an interview, a several-part interview on my blog, but I can't remember off the top of my head if I actually in the interview get into how he got into perfumery because I think I assume that people already know. So do find out about him. It's it's a fascinating story, and he's one he is one of the good guys of perfumery. He is he is the real deal. He's very very genuine. Um, both in terms of his positive feelings, for want of a better term, and his indignation. You know, he, I think he sometimes on social media gets quite in, rightfully indignant about social media and the effects it might be having on the industry, etc., etc. Um, but but do check him out. Um, I have tried this fragrance as well. I missed some comments. Uh, people have different tastes, says Ashfaq. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anyone here tried both Fai, Rose de Kandahar, and Malik Al Taif? Um, not me. Anybody out there? Stefan says, to be honest, I don't like it. Oh, that's a shame. Reminds me of a deodorant I once had. Mm, okay. Um, that powder accord drowns all the other notes, in my opinion. Interesting you should say that. So this one I have smelled before. Now this is, this is going to be, I'm going to have to move the cologne, his all natural cologne to the side because I've just got a tiny little vial, so I can't show you the bottle, but I suppose for the sake of the thumbnail, I could do this and just smile sweetly at the camera, even though this doesn't really give you an indication of what the um, 
the bottle for this new scent looks like because it's 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 got a sticker covering i think the whole of the front we haven't even said what it's called it's called l'air which is interesting you know very very direct reference to his most uh, successful perfume but this is l'air des alpes suisse which i think as far as the trajectory of the brand is concerned is very interesting because in some ways the his earlier output was more concerned with north africa the arabian world the, the the Wild West of America in the case of Lone Star Memories and it's almost as though he's now saying okay I've you know I'm famous for having made this lair of, 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 of the Moroccan desert now I'm going to do lair of my own homeland so that's what a standard tower bottle looks like but it's not exactly an indication of what Lair des Alpes Suisse looks like and because I've got this vial, this this is this is a recipe for disaster now. I need to do this very very carefully so that it doesn't go everywhere. But thankfully, my blotters fit perfectly in this vial. John says hello. So this is the first time I'm watching you live, and I'm enjoying it. Thank you very much for tuning in, and so glad you're enjoying it, and you haven't gone away yet. Are you a fan of Tower? Have you ever tried his work? Um, and did I miss any comments? What have we got? No, I didn't miss any comments, which is always a good thing. So, I tried this uh, just a couple of days ago, and I was surprised. I was surprised. Um, I think I was pleasantly surprised, but but I think just the fact that I was surprised was was great um, because Andy's work. Uh, oh, you've never tried it, Joe. You should check them out. Andy's work never really stays the same for very long. Uh, as I said, he had his sort of North African phase, he's done lots of roses, he definitely has a, a retro sensibility. Was it last year where he did his Les Années 25? It's such a shame that that was a limited edition because as a kind of homage to old style um, ambers like Shalimar, it was, it, was, it was just so stunning, just so beautiful. And I should have bought myself a bottle, but I was too late. So now I treasure my tiny little vial. Um, he's had his out there, modernist synthetic phase because he made some um, perfumes with just five ingredients. Uh, Mystery Forms Beta is talking to Ashfaq. Okay, so you, you, you carry on and have your conversation. That's fine. I noticed you said you tried both of them. So this was surprising because it smells outdoorsy. You know, it's the smell of the, the, the Swiss Alps, for goodness sake, um, which I had the real, real pleasure of driving through this summer, you know, through one of the, I didn't go through the Mont Blanc um, pass, but one of the other ones, I think it's St. Bernard. Um, just, just the most extraordinary scenery. But it's outdoorsy. It's outdoorsy almost in that kind of lemony, um, well scrubbed you know this is the smell of somebody who's running through air that is so bracing that within moments they've got rosy cheeks um and and and, and the cold air is really chilling their lungs so they're chilled from the outside chilled from the inside it, it's frosty and i'm not sure that's an adjective we would have associated with um with tower until now as far as says i hope this is not too metallic which is used to capture the cold. No, no, it doesn't strike me as metallic, actually. It almost strikes me as being glass-like. And, and as you'd expect, there, there is a pine note. Uh, I've heard of Tower, says Reza, want to try the Morocco ones and Lone Star, did not find a retailer that sells Tower here. You're in the UAE, right? I, I, I haven't misremembered that. Um, I thought there was a UAE retailer for Tower. I wonder if the Tower website um, has a list of stockists. I wonder if I should get in touch with Andy and actually find out, or maybe maybe if you're watching this by some by some weird chance, Andy, um, you should. T I, I was pretty sure, or did he mention on his blog that there was going to be a UAE retailer, and then maybe it didn't happen. I don't know. And, and I think maybe the fact that it's got this kind of lemony and pine-like aspect does start moving it in the direction of um, functional perfumery, which, which is always somewhat dodgy territory to find yourself in. You've got to be very, very careful. Um, it, it doesn't go right there, 
but I guess what it stops the perfume from being is is romantic. This is this is somehow very very efficient. You know, it's a perfume that does its job, which is great because it's Swiss. Uh, Ashfaq says I have Orion, which has that metallic note, and and the comments gone. Um, so far, your description reminds me of it. Okay. And Harry Friday says, hello from Azerbaijan. Amazing, that's fantastic. People tuning in from everywhere. And from New Jersey, evolutionist and Harry Friday. This is, this is, I, I still get such a kick out of the fact that there's people literally from all over the world. Um, so maybe this is the kind of, you know, maybe this is the sort of very, very Protestant <laughs> side of, of Swissness that is coming through here. This is, this is, this is proper, it's correct. It's, it's got a very efficient work ethic and, and you know, there's no hanging about with this fragrance. This is not a fragrance of idleness. This is a fragrance that you sort of spray on in the morning when you've got tons and tons of stuff to do and you want to get out and accomplish uh, all of your objectives. Um, Andy used to update his blog regularly without any question, one of the best perfumery blogs out there. When I first found out about it, I went back right to the very beginning of it and just, just read it all like a book, which you, which you can. Really, really fantastic blog. And I, we know from his blog that he goes on quite regular jogs. Um, and he's based in Zurich. I don't know if I said that. Um, and I guess he's not far from the Alps. Um, and. I can imagine this being a perfume that somebody would have made having been inspired during a jog um, through the Alps. You know, it doesn't feel like a picnic in the Alps or a, or a romp in the Alps or anything like that. This is no, this is, this is get out there and get your body working and get your lungs functioning and get your heart pumping. Um, which, which I'm conscious makes it sound as though I'm not clear whether I'm complimenting it or not. And I think that's because I'm not clear in myself. I need to give this time. Um, it's it's very, it sounds like Sauvage. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I, th I think we just have to establish that Andy probably couldn't make Sauvage if he, if he tried. If he tried to make something as crass and mindless and patronizing as Sauvage, he would still make something 10 times better than Sauvage, I think. <laughs> I think we can sort of just take that as a given. Um, no, it, it, it's just, it, it is different. It, it's a different direction for him. Now, having said all of that, I already know the dry down. I always do a blotter update a few hours after the live broadcast, but I can tell you where this is going. And it's in the dry down that it goes into more familiar tower territory, because as somebody's already said, it has got that ambigris, um, vanillic, skin-hugging, almost powdery quality. Uh, the dry down reminded me a little bit of the dry down of Orange Star. Not to a massive extent though, because of course that retains its citrusy note. But, but if, there is a, if there is a common tower thread of something that is based around ambergris and vanilla, you will find it in, in, the, in, in the dry down of this. The coldness is interesting though, you know, because it, it is it is definitely bracing rather than oppressive. So there is that gorgeous frostiness. And actually, for those of you who may be based in the UK, today was the first quite chilly morning of, of the season. And it made me think of this scent. Uh, I don't have a press release as such. Angeline says, hello, Purcell. It's amazing. I couldn't sleep and found out you were alive. Well, what a fantastic cure for insomnia <laughs> happened to be. Oh, and... Um, Oh, actually, maybe I shouldn't say anything because maybe I'd be breaking a, a confidence. No, never mind. Um, forget the last three seconds happened. Thank you very much for tuning in, Angeline. Um, I've got, I haven't got a, a press release as such. I've, ju I've just got the blurb that's that's on the um, on the tower website. It says the head notes are fresh, like a breeze from treeless mountain summits, rough granite ground. Okay, rough is interesting. It it, it it's rugged. I would give it rugged the cool air from the glacier and bitter alpine herbs. Actually, I didn't say bitter, I don't think, and bitter is a good word to use in this context too. The heart notes are fresh, green with hints of spices, floral delicacies such as the red alpine lily bloom on lush meadows, powdery, spicy green. Interesting. The body notes are inspired by alpine forests on cliffy slopes. The woody warmth of timber, larch and beech with the sweet amber perfume of dry earth in the sun. 
notes are inspired by Alp. Oh, it's just repeated that thing. Fine. Check out the website, Andy, if you're watching. You've got you've got some text repeated in the body notes. Um, and as it says, L'Air des Alpes Suisse is not only hand-filled and labelled in Switzerland, but also inspired by the beauty of the Swiss mountains. And that oh, forever fragrant kid, hello. And and it's it's a very very particular beauty, isn't it? Because it's. It's quite chaste, I think, would be fair to say. I mean, I've already I've already said that it's not a beauty that feels particularly romantic in a sensuous way, but but beauty doesn't have to be about sensuality all the time or about any kind of, you know, raunchy physicality. Um, it, it can be chaste, it can be composed, um, and I think I think the trick with this one, the the the, the deal breaker will with this one, if you like, for some people, will be whether they can get past that initial fresh pine-like opening, because I think for some people it may take it too close to the territory of functional perfumery. Like I said, the Romantic poets loved the Alps; it was such a part of the Grand Tour. Very good point. Very, very good point. And this is why I love my audience and I have the best audience in the world. Because I don't know how many audiences out there would be able to tell me something blindingly accurate <laughs> about the Romantic Poets. Yes, you're right. Um, and actually, they got up to all sorts there as well, didn't they? So that's what I said out the window. Smell of dry earth is always intriguing, says Ashfax. Sometimes I wear a Mitti attar, which I found quite calming. What's Mitti? Should I know what Mitti is? Um, so yes, you, you're right. I mean, wasn't wasn't Byron's house on somewhere on Lake Geneva or near? Or am I making that up? The house where he invited everybody round, and then Mary Shelley ended up writing Frankenstein. Wasn't that wasn't that in Switzerland? So so there we go. Do you mind describing functional perfumery briefly? Oh, all I mean by functional perfumery is uh, the, the perfumes that you would actually get in not in five, fine fragrances, but things like detergents, soaps washing up powders, that kind of thing. That's that's what I would mean by functional perfumery. Um, uh, uh, da, 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 Dream of Me No More says, yep, it's somewhere there. I thought it was. And Reza says, we have the best perfume reviewer, critic, writer, but he couldn't make it, which is why you've got me tonight, right? Yeah, I knew that's the thing you were going to say next, but that's fine. I forgive you, Reza. Right, I, I think we're done, people. Um, I would. It's an Indian atar made by baking clays on a sandalwood base. Gosh, that sounds fascinating. I think we should write to Neela Vermeer and say she needs to make a perfume based on based on that. Um, I, I am warming to this and I'm definitely going to have to give it some proper skin time, but it's a surprise. And I'll tell you what I thought yesterday when I tried this. It's a surprise, kind of in the same realms of when Serge Lutens decided to do his low range when from which we had Le Froide and all of those you know that was that was a very marked departure from everything he'd done before and this feels a little bit like that and I am all for perfumers um you know stretching their wings or whatever the expression is and trying different things I think people who were expecting another La du Désert another Lone Star Memories another Rose Chypre will be thinking mm, okay not so sure about this but probably worth um um giving a bit more attention to is Mitty Petricor, says Mystery Forms Beta. Oh, well, Ashfaq will have to answer that one. So, once again, thank you very much for tuning in. Full video description. Oh, cooking, not baking. So, okay. Full video description will come up a, a few hours after the broadcast. And if you're watching after the live broadcast, please, please feel free to um, ask a question, leave a comment. Uh, next up on the blog, as far as written reviews go, uh, there should be a review of um, the brand new scent from Galavant. Very, very interesting perfume. Uh, called Los Angeles. Glad I caught a bit, says Forever Fragrant. I'm very, very glad that you tuned in. So, like I said, comments, questions, subscriptions to the channel, suggestions, things you'd like me to review, anything like that is always welcome. And also check out my coffee page, you'll see the link down below. But until next time, thank you very much for tuning in and be good. Bye. <laughs>